Lord God, the Father, just ask you to help us and guide us, Lord, to today into the Word of God, to the enemy of the Word of God. And yet, Lord God, through the enemy of the Word of God, there are some that are saved. And Lord, we need to study this today because this is alive and well in 2021. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. John chapter 3. Look at that. Of course, we won't get far. John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Now we're going to look at the Pharisees. And I would write off the Pharisees, say, let's move on. But you will you will find Pharisees today in 2021. And they're not called Pharisees, but they take after the Pharisees. And it would be a proper Bible statement to look at these people and to realize there are people not called Pharisees, but there are Pharisees alive and well today. <clears throat> so we're going to look at Pharisees now. Are all Pharisees bad? Nicodemus is a man that is saved to his era. What I mean that is he saved and believes God before the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He will show up at the burial of Jesus Christ. But you don't, I don't believe we, you see, we'll look at him next week, Lord willing. Paul was a Pharisee. He got saved after the death, burial, and resurrection, and he preaches the gospel where to preach. But there are a group of people out there who follow the way of the Pharisees and Matthew. A Jewish book, Matthew. We'll stay in Matthew quite a bit. Matthew chapter 3. And I think it's needful for a study on the Pharisees. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. This is John the Baptist. And when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, now remember, Jesus is not even on the scene yet. The Pharisees are showing up to this baptism of John. He said unto him, O generation of vipers, what a way to treat your visitors. Who has warned you to flee the wrath to come? Now we will learn as we study the gospel of John and even a little bit today, some of the Pharisees were baptized. I believe the apostle Paul was baptized. Mm -hmm. Because the John's baptism is one of the requisites of a of apostle. And Paul became apostle. But you'll learn later on as we go through John and maybe today, many of the Pharisees rejected John's baptism. And John was prescribed according to the, to the book of Isaiah. The man coming from the wilderness preaching the way of Jesus Christ. And here they're they're open up in chapter three, and John the Baptist calls a, calls them vipers to tell you what kind of character they are. In Matthew five two, and we're not going to look at all the things of the Pharisees. Just we will see enough Pharisees in our study of of John that we can look back to today and say, okay, that's who we studied. And I said, 520, Matthew 520. Jesus says, I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Well, if there's any body of men that lived correct, it was the Pharisees. And yet they were enemies of God, and yet they lived to the letter of the law. They were correct with the standards of living, but they were not correct with God. They did it as in traditions and formalism, not for the love of God. And we'll see that. So, in order to be saved in Matthew, Jesus, you got to be better than the Pharisees. Well, that was a 
kicking a butt to the Pharisees. Because there is one that was better than the Pharisees, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And as we again we go through the Gospel of John, when we come across this Phariism, we'll see their character. In Matthew 12, 14, we'll look at another aspect of the Pharisees. Matthew 12, 14. And these are pretty much in all order, all in order. And at the end, we'll be back in Matthew. But right now, Matthew 12, verse 14, the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, Jesus, how they might destroy him. They hated Jesus. Get that. Now, there were exceptions like Nicodemus. Paul hated Jesus until he got saved. Paul didn't even know who he was, Jesus. As Jesus is speaking to him. But the Pharisees are the ones with the scribes are seeking to, we got to get rid of that man, Jesus. We got to get rid of him. We got to destroy, kill. That's murder. And as we go into this, what we're going to look at today is I hope you see a religion in the Pharisees that's alive and well today. And chapter 15, verse 12. 15, verse 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou? That the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying. <coughs> Excuse me. The Pharisees got offended in what Jesus said. Boy, I can tell you many people get offended in what Jesus said. And they're religious. A mark of a Pharisee. We got to get rid of that word of God, Jesus. And whatever Jesus in the Bible says, I'm offended. And that John called them vipers. Well, that's the serpent. In chapter 16, verse 11. <laughs> Jesus speaking, how is it that you do not understand that I spank it not of you concerning bread? You should beware the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then understood how they bid them not beware of the leaven of bread, but the doctrine of the Pharisees and scribes. Leaven is a bad thing in the Bible. And Jesus warns them of the leaven, not of bread, but of doctrine. They have a doctrine, their own specific doctrine. And Jesus says, beware of them. And remember that statement every time you hear about the Pharisees. Jesus is against their teaching. They want Jesus dead. And they are offended at what Jesus says. And what Jesus says that they're offensive to, it completely goes against what they teach and believe. Doctrine is what you is what is taught. What is believed. That's what doctrine means. A doctrinal study of the Bible is what does the Bible say and what does it teach? The Pharisees teach otherwise. You'll find them teaching traditions rather than the Word of God. So uh, chapter 22, verse 15. Matthew 22, 15, you'll find. And if I came right out and said a group of people, you would understand who I'm saying right away. In Matthew 22, 15, then went the Pharisees and took counsel. They're always holding councils, mm -hmm. meetings. Do you know of a church that has councils? 
such as the Council of Trent, the Council of Worms, the Council of... So you got to know history. Because history speaks about these group of people, though they're not called Pharisees, they're also a church called the Catholics. Now I nailed it. And how they might entangle him with his talk. All right, they were, were offended what he said. Now they're going to take what he said and they're going to twist it to their betterment that they might be able to destroy him. <clears throat> That's their doctrine. You can see already they are not examples of God and godliness. They're trying to get rid of you. They'll try to entangle you and they get offended at you when you speak and teach from the Bible. That is a mark of the Pharisee and their vipers. And chapter 23, verse 2. I hope. In chapter 23, verse 2, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Now, there was no Moses' seat. But they have this religious thing of there's a throne, there's a special seat, there's a special order. The Catholic Church has a special seat for the Pope. So does Baptist Popes. They got a special seat where the pastor sits. That one seat. That's what the Pope. And knows how the Moses seat, the law. <laughs> they want the law. They bring the law. Woe be to a group of people that bring in the law. Paul rebukes a church because there were people bringing in the law. We're not under law. We're under grace. Amen. So it's messed up. In Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. And we've got to beware. Of these Pharisees. Because they're not called Pharisees today. Mm -mm. 7.30. Luke chapter 7.30. And we got to recognize these people. And as we get further by the, by the end of the study. I hope you'll see that there is a group of people running around. Religious. That are offended with their own doctrine. That sit in special seats. That try to twist what you say. I've had him, I, I've dealt with him. You know, Jesus said, you know, call no man your father. Well, you know, that, that, you know, you call your earthly father, blah, 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 blah. Well, don't you know that Peter had a mother-in-law in order to be a mother-in-law, that your first pope had to be married? Well, you know, blah, 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 blah. Twisting what the scriptures say. Well, you know that Mary had to have other children because it said uh, Jesus and his brother. Well, that was cousins and nephews and uncles and blah, 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 blah. Why can't you just call the Bible for what it was? So Luke chapter 7, verse 30. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves. Being not baptized of him, there's that baptism of John. They God ordained the baptism of John, and the Pharisees said, We ain't doing that. Though earlier we saw in Matthew, they showed up. And they showed up not to be baptized. They rejected that baptism. They showed up to reject and cause a trouble. Now you'll find out we we're not we won't look at that today, but you'll find out that Jesus will be teaching the group of people. And the Pharisees will come in and they'll interrupt the teaching with stupid questions. They'll interrupt the whole thing to try to tap their interruption. But if you were to interrupt their message, whoa. So they outright reject 
God's counsel. And Jesus said they were righteous, but they weren't righteous with God. They were righteous of being great and good people. But not in the eyes of God. So, chapter 16, verse 14 of Luke. <clears throat> Luke 16, 14. And this is all about the Pharisees. And the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things and they derided him, Jesus. Well, number one, they were covetous. They wanted, they wanted, they wanted. Don't they know what the law said? The Ten Commandments, thou shalt not cover the neighbor's wife, thou shalt not cover the neighbor's good. Don't they know the Tenth Commandment? And to them, which would be the Ninth and Tenth Commandment? That's the Catholic Church, you know. Catholics split the Tenth Commandment into two so they can keep their dollies. But here, the Pharisees are covetous. They want, they want, they want. And they also derided they laughed and ridiculed Jesus Christ. Now, if you want to see laughter and, and ridiculing the word of God, come with us for their, their Easter celebration or their Christmas mass as we will stand on the sidewalk and hand out gospel tracts of the truth or we'll preach to them about the truth and you watch their people of their church laugh you to scorn. We've got videos. Who do you think you're? Oh, 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 look at you guys here. And we go out in the streets and we never charge anybody money, but they'll pass the plate in front of them for their masses and their ceremonies. That's their doc. Their doctrine is Easter and Christmas. That's not the church's doctrine. They outright form councils that go against the word of God. And the councils of Trent are against the word of God. If you don't believe in the mass, you're considered anathema. If you say that Mary wasn't a perfectual virgin for her entire life, you're an anathema. If you don't see that, that, that Mary was an conception, you're an anathema. Anathema means you're going to hell. Well, you're narrow-minded because the only way I tell you go to hell is when you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Though you got to believe in the virgin birth. John chapter 11. John chapter 11. We've got to be careful because they're running around. And you know who they are. John eleven fifty seven. Because they wear their, their shirts on backwards. And they wear long gowns. So you know who they are. And you're to honor as such. John eleven fifty seven. Now behold the chief priests and the Pharisees. All right. They are not the priests of God. There's the chief priest. That chief priest were of the family of Aaron of the Levites. The Pharisees are called, if you ever heard the name, they're called the Sanhedrin. It's a Jewish group of men handling the affairs of the religious order. They work with the chief priests, but they're not the chief priests, though they are in charge of religious things. The chief priests were part of them, but they could even be Pharisees themselves, but the offices, the Pharisees was never in office by God. Now, the chief priest was in office. You find that in the Old Testament of the sons of Aaron. So there's that difference there. John 18, 3. John 18, 3. Jesus is, is in the garden. He's praying. In John 18, 3, Judas, 
Then having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests, that's the ones of Aaron, and the Pharisees. So when Jesus is rested in Gethsemane, the men that are walking with Judas are the men of the chief priests and the, uh, of the Pharisees. The religious police, the religious order of the Jewish people are the ones that arrested Jesus and held that kangaroo court before he's turned over to the Roman government. And as you can see, this is John chapter 18. Lord willing, once we get, through, we will see all this played out before us. But who's the one that arrested Jesus? The Pharisees. It was the Pharisees' police officers. And I can't even show you an organization of the United States of America. There is none. We don't hold a church state in America. And if I say, okay, what if the Catholic Church, what is it? It would be the Pope's secret police, which he does have. The Pope, the Pope has his own police force. He has his own postal stamp thing. He has his own money. He has his own government form. So did the Pharisees. And the Pharisees had their own police, a church state system. And the fact is, who went and arrested Jesus? The Pharisees' police. Judas went to the, to the chief priest and went to the Pharisees, and they combined together to, to charge him, to give him 30 pieces of silver. This is the men we're talking about. These would be the men that get their little councils and say, there's a man that's preaching in the street in Daytona Beach. He's preaching against Catholicism. Let's get along with the mayor. Let's, get, let's try to shut that guy up. And I can tell you right now, I can tell you who the Catholics are always because they're the most mean, nasty, bigoted ones there screaming and hollering. That I'm screaming and hollering. Well, you're screaming and hollering. No, you're screaming out, and they're the ones that would say you need to go, and they run back. That's why I say we, we have to stop and look at the Pharisees because here they are, and to realize if the Catholic Church and the Muslims and the Jehovah Witnesses and and the Mormons, if they could tear up the Constitution of the United States and rip it up and shred it, which might happen. Well, the very first thing they would do in a violation of no more constitution, is that man that preaches on the street in, in Mongolia Avenue and Daytona Beach, he that preaches to Jesus that's against us, I'd be the first ones they go after and arrest. Watch when the Constitution is gone. If it happens, I'm not saying it's going to happen. But watch which group of people will say that's unconstitutional. See, right now, they hate. Because, because when we had the battles of the lawyers, and the lawyer says, the Supreme Court says, the United States Constitution says that man has the right to be there to do what he's doing. They hate that. And if you ever want to put salt in a wound when you're preaching on the street, oh, you got to get out. Oh, our Constitution says we have the right to be here. Oh, that hates him. That hates him just as much as throwing the Bible at him. But there they are. Now, Acts 23. Acts 23. Acts chapter 23. <clears throat> verse 8. Well, they've got to be different from us. Okay? Acts 23, 8, the Sadducees say there is no resurrection, neither angel or spirit. Now they say, you know, the Sadducees didn't believe in nothing. And they would say, sad you see. <laughs> they have no hope. But the Pharisees confessed both resurrection, angel, and spirit. 
I confess a resurrection. I confess angels and I confess the spirit. Listen, the Catholics will tell you that there's a resurrection. Easter, that's not my resurrection. That's another resurrection. Spirit, they will say there's a spirit. Paul says there's another spirit. Angels, angels visit them all the time. Little uh, winged angels with, with long blonde hair of the female. When Jesus tells us they're sexless. So be careful because the Pharisees can say, hey, we got the same Jesus. Well, biblically, no, we don't. Uh, to a point we do, all right? Yeah, my Jesus suffered and died on the cross, but my Jesus is off the cross and seated at the right hand of God. Yes, Mary conceived without a man. She was the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. She is not the mother of God, but she had other children. I don't eat and drink the body and blood of Jesus Christ. So a Catholic, well, we believe the same thing. No, we don't. And then they'll go down to the very fundamentals, which Paul will tell the Corinthian church, there's another spirit, there's another gospel, and there's another Jesus. Boom. Even the Jehovah, well, you know, we got the same Jesus. No, we don't. Your Jesus is not God. My Jesus is God. Your doctrine is, you know, your females that have children are at 144,000 when the Bible says they're males that are virgins. Problem. So these Pharisees today called Catholics and other religions, they got a problem. They may have what seems the foundation of the fundamentals, but... Doctrinally, that Jesus says, be warned of their teachings. The Catholic Church will tell you that the Pope and tradition overrides what the Bible says. I know that for a fact. I'm ex-Catholic. Oh, Ronnie, no, 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 no. The Bible overrides the Pope and overrides their traditions. The problem with the churches today is the church has come into the Pope's ways and the Pope's tradition and the Pope's meanings. They left the Bible. Now, let's look at some of the marks of them. Matthew again. And let's let Jesus nail them down for us. <clears throat> because there will be some people, now I... Belong to a Roman Catholic family, or most of them are now dead. And there have been marriages, and there have been deaths. And you say, well, did you go to the marriages? No. Nope. Did you go to the funeral? I went to the graveyard, but I didn't go to the church. Because when they do a marriage, Catholic, and when they do a funeral in the church, Catholic, they partake of the mass. I, I have nothing to do with that. I don't want anybody to think I do part of that. I'll meet you at the I'll meet you at the reception. And I'll meet you at, at the graveyard. Because if I come walking out of the Catholic church, you're gonna say, "Wow, look at that Baptist over there. He partakes." No, I don't. I abstain from all appearance of evil. So let's look at what Jesus rebukes. These men, Matthew 23, 13. Whoa, that's not good. You already started off, whoa. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. I ain't very good right there. I was in the elevator one, all the times I spent in the hospital. We're in the elevator one time in Norwich, and, and, and one of the monkeys come into the thing. I said, good afternoon, sir. And a woman, you're going to call him father. I ain't going to call him father. The Bible says not to. Right. I said, that guy needs to go change his clothes and put some pants on. <laughs> By the way, you have any children? He goes, no, I don't have no children. I said, why did they call you father then? And that woman, well, you ought not treat him like that. I'm just telling the truth. And they reported me to security at the hospital. But, but hypocrites, hypocrites. You know what a hypocrite is? I'm a father and I have no children. 
A hypocrite is a pope that will tell you about marriage has never been married. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Ye neither go in yourself. Jesus said you're not going to heaven. Neither suffice ye then that are entering to go in it. So what's that? Well, you see, when, when a soul dies outside the state of the church, they go to a place called purgatory. You can't go out of purgatory unless you burn candles and give us money and have prayers. We'll see that in a moment. The church actually will say, you don't get to go to heaven. You get a stopping off period, which the popes have closed and opened, closed and opened and closed purgatory. The Catholic Church says you go to heaven or you go to hell based upon what we say. And if you if you don't if you don't get your last rites read, you go to hell. And don't tell me I grew up with a Catholic religion and the most dreadful for a Catholic to die is I gotta have my last rites. Well, listen, we're in the middle of a war. We're back. You better get that priest over here before I die in this battlefield, or I'll go to hell. That's what they believe. Here they are right now. And Jesus rebukes them. I used to burn. I, I, was, I was a Catholic. I didn't know. I put my nickel in the thing. The guy told me it was a nickel. And I burned candles. I had no idea what I was burning for. I learned later. That's to burn your family out of hell. So I asked the Catholic one time. I said, you mean to tell me that you go off to purgatory and and your family will pray you out and pay you out. A yeah. I said, what if they think you're an idiot and a loser? You're in trouble. Because you think that priest is going to pray for you without money? Watch the next one, verse 14. Whoa, again. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, in case you didn't get it the first time. For ye devour widows' houses for a pretense to make long prayers. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. What's that one? Devour a widow's houses. You spend up all their money, all their time, and all their awe so we can pray your husband out and get him into heaven. And it's costly. And they threaten you. I know born again, saved Christian who got saved, it took him many years to leave the Catholic Church because if I don't die and I'm not buried in a Catholic cemetery, and they just, that power and pressure of the Catholic Church, they got you in bondage. Jesus said, Come take my yoke, it's easy. What's that bondage? The Pharisees. And put a bond on the people. And what do you think of that widow could not afford the price anymore? All right. We're, okay. Then your husband goes off to hell. We're not going to help you no more. We don't give you no more freebies. And look what Jesus said. Get the greater damnation. There are different levels of hell. There's 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you compass sea and land. Christopher Columbus went in the power of Spain and the Catholic Church. There are Catholic missions that go out all over the world. Maryland is the Catholic foundation set forth in the new world for the Roman Catholic Church. Why would it be called Maryland? And notice where Maryland is right next to the Roman province called Washington, D.C. That looks like Rome, tastes like Rome, and it's the government powers of our nation right next to Maryland. Quinky dinky. Church and state. Oh, we're against church and state. What's the Roman government looking like? You know, you look at our White House. It looks Roman. With an obelisk of the Washington Tower. And right next over across the way is Maryland. 
Don't give me church and state. You realize every president of the United States, regardless of what denomination, if he has a denomination, every president of the United States has a Roman Catholic priest behind his office somewhere. Don't tell me. I was Catholic. So, hit first, you come to see and land to make one postulate. And when he is a when he is made, when you find a person who's not a Catholic, you make him Catholic. Ye make them twofold more child of hell than yourselves. You know they make them twofold more hell. The Catholics will go over there, they'll go over to a nation and say, "Will you worship the Unga Bunga? Well, you take the Unga Bunga and you put them with the Virgin Mary. We'll put the Unga Bunga and, Vir and Virgin Mary together. Your Unga Bunga now becomes the Blessed Virgin Mary. Don't believe me? S star. Esther is the God that is, 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 is Esther is the God of Jeremiah, the Queen of Heaven. That Queen of Heaven today is now Esther and now Mary. Even the Baptist Church, we'll take your Unga Boonga, we'll take the Christmas, and we'll apply it to a church holiday. We'll take your Unga Beskis, and we'll make it Easter, and we'll put it in the church house. You realize a lot of the stuff that goes on in in in, in your modern Baptist church today comes from Constantine, Catholic. I seen the cross in the sky as I was battling because my mother is a virgin. You don't know about Constantine? You need to read about Constantine because Constantine came into the church and put his crap in the church. I'm allowed to say crap, I believe. If I can't say crap, oops, I said it. <laughs> So what the Catholic Church goes out there and say, well, you can keep your gods. Here's our gods. And you keep your gods together with our gods. And that makes everybody just, and you're, you got double gods. That's a twofold child of hell. Verse 16, woe unto you, ye blind guides. <laughs> That's talking to the Pharisees. Which say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, there's no temple today, but don't you dare swear against that altar at the Catholic Church where the, behind that altar is a sacred image of something. There are some Catholic churches where they got two or three heads of the skull of John the Baptist. And, and, and the thing is, well, Wait a minute, there's only one to John the Baptist. And, and thinking, well, here's baby John the Baptist, and here's the adult John the Baptist. Oh, there's one that has the feathers of Michael the Archangel. He has no feathers. There's a church that's got the breast milk of, of the Virgin Mary. There is this one. We've got the, the bones of St. Peter. Check it out. Nonsense that don't go with the Bible that goes with tradition. And you can say GD and you can use the name of Jesus Christ as a curse, but don't you dare step on that wafer. How sacred is that wafer? Do you know that there is in the catechism, there is in the Council of Trent rules that if you accidentally throw up the wafer, you have to dry it out and eat that wafer again. Yes, there are rules. You can't throw it in the garbage. You can't put it on the ground. The wafer. But they threw the Bible out. And they killed and shed the blood of Christians and Bible people. But the little wafer. Tell me about it. I'm ex-Catholic, I know. Uh, verse 23. Same chapter, verse 23. Right, you know, it's about the temple. There is no temple. Verse 23, Matthew 23, 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Have you got it yet? <laughs> That's a verily, verily, verily. For ye pay tithe. Oh, look at that, they tithe. Catholics tithe. I wonder if they go running to Malachi. <laughs> they tithe of mint. 
and honest and coming and have old men. Look at that. They don't give just money. They give out of their garden. They're better Baptists. I, I, I grew tomatoes and I got I got 10 tomatoes. Here's one tomato, sir. That's all under the law. Churches today, the Baptist will put you under tithing. That's against the law. Paul says a cheerful giver. And have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought to have done not to leave the other undone. You got people in your church that are having sexual immorality with young boys. But you're worried about what this country is doing. What about your own people? You just buy off the families. Never mind the lives ruined by your priests. Faith? They ain't got no faith in God. The faith they had, they tried to kill Jesus. They would kill Jesus again. They do. Every Mass, they kill the body of Jesus so you can eat it and drink it. Uh, verse 25. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Got it? <laughs> For you make clean the outside of the cup, of this platter, but within they're full of extortion and excess. You're filthy, Jesus says. Verse 27. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites. For <coughs> you are, <coughs> excuse me, you are like whited sepulchers. You know what religion has sepulchers in the graveyards? Which a dear, pure, beautiful outward, but are full of dead man's bones and of unclean. That church looks great on the outside. And if you've seen pictures of the Vatican, oh, it looks fancy. But look in the history books of the Vatican. Look in the history books of the Catholic Church. You see the bones and blood of saints and martyrs. Box's Book of Martyrs. Those are the religious Jewish Pharisees. Today, they're the Gentile Catholic Church. They're the same. This is a different name and different breed. This is Jewish. That's Gentile. That's why we're doing a complete study we're doing today because you know what? It's the same animal. It's the same animal. And if the Catholic is the Antichrist running to the tribulation, they're going to recognize it. Why? Because they're the same dog. They act and look and do as what the Pharisees done. There's no change. Verse number 29, last one. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. I, have, we, have we got it now? <laughs> Hypocrites. Oh. Because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres, uh, the, the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would have not partakers of them, the blood of the prophet. Yes, you are. You know what the church does today? They completely deny the Inquisitions. They completely deny Fox's Book of Martyrs. They completely deny the blood of the saints of Jesus Christ over the Word of God. Tyndale and all them. Oh no, that's that's ancient history. Let's erase the history book. That's exactly what Jesus said. But we're looking at the Jewish offices, the Jewish people, and yet the Gentiles are done the same thing. So if this church will go to Jewish in the times of Jacob's trouble, it's not going to be a broken record. It's going to be, oh, got to be the same ones. They're the same people. Won't even recognize the difference. And yet one is Jewish and one is Gentile. 
but look how close they are. And Jesus says, avoid them. Jesus said had nothing due to them. And Constantine has brought that into the modern churches. And there are Christians out there. Oh, I'll, yeah, I'll go to the Catholic funeral. I'll go to the Catholic marriage. I believe you're going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ and you're going to be found fault. I wouldn't have anything to do with them. I'm not bashing the Catholic individ the individuals you can you can witness and get if you can get them in the Bible, you would do something. The Pope and the order of the Catholic Church would not want you in that Bible. They want you traditions. And tradition goes against everything that Jesus taught, everything that Paul taught. Paul came out as a Pharisee and became a Christian. So that's the Pharisees, and there are good Pharisees. And then you got the, the, the order of the Pharisees. And I thought that was important for us to take a whole night to do and study because we're, we're Catholic here. We were Catholics. Mm -hmm. And to put the broadcast out to the world, hey, I don't stand on your side. And if you want to see what we read today, get yourself Fox's Book of Martyrs and study. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees and the Catholic Church are enemies of the Bible, enemies of God.